When Kane made his debut at the 1997 Bad Blood pay-per-view, one of the things that really made an impression was his ring attire. The WWF done a fantastic job when it came to the overall presentation of the Big Red Machine. He really did look intimidating as he stood face to face with his brother at the end of the show, but naturally fans would begin to wonder what was Kane hiding behind that mask. Even though original concept designs would feature Kane without the mask, the mask would end up serving two purposes. Firstly, the man who portrayed Kane, Glenn Jacobs, had worked previously in the WWF as Isaac Yankum in the fake Diesel, and fans weren't going to buy into the guy who played Isaac Yankum or Diesel being the brother of The Undertaker. So covering up Kane's face helped to keep Glenn Jacobs anonymous in the eyes of casual WWF fans. The second reason it was used was a little more creative and fictional. In storyline, Kane had been badly burned. Apparently, Kane's face had been so badly disfigured that he opted to wear a mask. And this is where fans got intrigued. Time and time again, we would get reminded about Kane's troubled past and the fire that destroyed his face. And while smart fans would shrug this off and instantly think of Isaac Yankum covering himself up with a cool mask, other fans who allowed themselves to enjoy the story for what it was and suspend their disbelief for a little while got really curious about Kane's face. The WWE, especially around this era, was much more enjoyable if we threw critical thinking out the window for the sake of enjoyment, as tough as that may be at times, but the company was relying on fans believing that Kane was hiding something truly horrific behind his mask, and for the most part, fans bought into it. Kane's mask became the most identifiable part of the character, but nearly six years after making his debut, the WWE decided that it was time to reveal Kane's face. Only two men were behind the idea, Vince McMahon and Glenn Jacobs himself. Vince and Glenn felt that the Kane character had gone as far as it could with the mask, the mystique surrounding the mask wasn't the same as what it was during the late 90s, and by completely removing it from the Kane character, the WWE would be able to begin a new chapter in the story of Kane. Today we're going to take a look at the unmasking of the Big Red Machine, and this video was requested by Patreon supporter Cameron Watson. As mentioned earlier, the original concept art for Kane shows him without a mask, and in the very early stages of Kane's character development, the Big Red Machine was actually going to debut without covering his face while also wearing a cape. Glenn Jacobs talked about this in an interview, he said, Kane dons the mask because he is horribly disfigured, unstable, mentally insane and crazy. So I thought it would basically look like he had escaped from an institution. Then I get the creative for the costume and it looked like a superhero. I had worn a cape at one time, I wore it only like once, but it was like this superhero thing and so I called Vince McMahon, which was uncomfortable because here I am, I finally get my big break and I'm already complaining about it. The picture of Kane wearing a cape has been circulated for a long time and, as we all know, it was eventually dropped. But personally, I thought it looked fine. Maybe it just looks good because it's different from what we regularly saw on television, but anyway, from looking at the concept art, the big changes that were made here was the eventual removal of the cape and the addition of the mask. Smart fans and those who really wanted to know knew that it was Glenn Jacobs under the mask, but personally, I think Kane covering his face was the right call in the end for reasons already mentioned. It hid away Glenn's identity and it played well into the storyline. Bruce Pritchard on his Something to Wrestle podcast takes credit for putting Kane in a mask. This kind of goes against the original concept art, but Bruce said, I said, what if we put him in a mask? Glenn had worked as Unabom and I know Vince hated the hockey mask look. I said, we could put him in a mask and we can cover his body up enough so that you know it's not Isaac Yankum. We then decided that his face would be disfigured, he'd have no voice and he can't talk. Bruce Pritchard also revealed that the WWF were not looking further than WrestleMania 14 when it came to the Big Red Machine. After The Undertaker faced Kane in a one-on-one -on -one match at the biggest show of the year, Bruce actually said that it would be possible that Glenn Jacobs would be sent elsewhere only to come back again as another new character. 
The company was initially only looking at the blow-off WrestleMania match and for a brief time there was a possibility that Kane would not stick around after losing to his older brother but thankfully that didn't happen. The Big Red Machine left an impression on WWF fans, even when the company was trying to move away from cartoon-like characters in order to usher in a much more contemporary Attitude Era, fans still got behind the Kane character. And this really was an achievement in itself. Glenn's previous runs could be considered as complete failures in terms of building a new star, but Kane just worked, and the WWF were smart to keep a lot of Kane's character a mystery. His backstory would of course get expanded upon, and he would come out of his shell a little more as the years went on, but there was always one constant, one thing that was never revealed to the audience, and that was Kane's face. Changes to the mask were also made as Kane's career continued on. It was almost as if pieces of his attire were shedded away as the Kane character moved further and further away from his dark origin story. Whether you think this was a good thing or a bad thing is completely up to you, but I honestly didn't care much for this version of Kane's mask right here, the one that exposes his mouth. Glenn has spoke before about how restrictive the original Kane mask was and this new mask allowed him to breathe a lot easier when competing. So for practical reasons it was great, but I always liked the original versions of the mask, it just looked a lot more intimidating to me. Maybe it was because it hid more of Kane's face away, I'm not sure. But this doesn't take away from the fact that even a wrestler that wears a mask like Kane still has to evolve over the years. And this was mainly done in Glenn's case by making him a little more human while also making changes to his ring gear and his mask. As mentioned earlier though, Vince McMahon and Glenn Jacobs felt there was nothing more they could do with the character. And honestly, I'm a bit torn on their decision to remove Kane's mask and take away one of the most important things about the gimmick. When we compare the 1997 Kane with the early 2003 Kane though, it's clear that the overall mystery of the Kane character was completely done with. Kane was still a big intimidating guy, but that uncaring and destructive monster was long gone. He even done a lot of comedy spots, and it seemed like the WWE got a kick out of putting Kane in positions that the character should never really be in. To this day, fans will say that Kane should never have taken off the mask, and I do agree to some extent, but then again, if the guy portraying the character feels like he's hit a roadblock, then who are we to steer his path in a direction he doesn't want to go in? Unmasking Kane could possibly rejuvenate the character, a character that, you gotta admit, just wasn't the same as it was before. I too prefer Kane with the mask on, but I also get that Glenn wanted to write another chapter for the story of Kane. And to be fair, the removal of the mask did bring the monster back. So the decision was made on the June 23rd 2003 episode of Raw, yes on an episode of Raw and not on pay per view, Kane would take off his mask and reveal his face to the world. As with most things on WWF Raw from mid 2003 onwards, the Evolution faction was involved in this storyline. Kane had become friends with Rob Van Dam, and Mr. Monday Night had been helping Kane come out of his shell even more so than before. The duo won the tag team titles in March of 2003, it was actually on the Raw that followed WrestleMania 19, but RVD and Kane would end up dropping the titles at Bad Blood 2003 in a match against La Resistance. Towards the end of the tag team title run, Kane and RVD had some problems. The Big Red Machine seemed troubled, almost as if he had forgotten that he was once a monster of destruction. Steve Austin criticised Kane when the Big Red Machine took a loss on Raw, Austin questioned if Kane still had the fire that burns, and Stone Cold tried to provoke Kane to the point of snapping. Austin wanted to see the old destructive Kane, but it wasn't there anymore. The segment ended with Kane taking a stone cold stunner, and Austin seemingly giving up on trying to reincarnate the monster. Kane and RVD then dropped the tag belts at Bad Blood, RVD hit Kane by accident towards the end of the match, and so Kane decided the next night on Raw that if he and RVD failed to recapture the titles in a rematch, then their tag team would split up and both men would go their separate ways. 
When RVD got shoved off the top rope and onto Kane, the Big Red Machine rediscovered his fire and he went on an absolute rampage. The old Kane was seemingly back and someone who paid close attention to what was going on was the game Triple H, the leader of evolution. Triple H comes down to the ring after Kane went berserk and the game says he can help Kane evolve. Kane will no longer be held back in the WWE if he joins evolution. Before Kane could give an answer, Stone Cold Steve Austin comes down to the ring and he gives Kane a few options. He can join Evolution if he wants, but if he refuses, Steve Austin will grant Kane a World Heavyweight title shot next week on Raw against the game. Eric Bischoff then comes out and Bischoff tells Kane that he can take the title shot if he wants, but if the Big Red Machine can't defeat Triple H, then he will have to take off his mask. Kane makes a decision, while it looks like he's gonna join Evolution by choke slamming Steve Austin, it's Triple H who feels the wrath of the Big Red Machine. Just like that, Kane had put his mask on the line against the World Heavyweight Champion in a main event match on Raw. A few things before carrying on. First of all, the whole thing with Steve Austin trying to bring out Kane's dark side once again was great. I thought it was good that Kane's shortcomings as a monster was highlighted on WWE programming. What I didn't think was so good was that the Mask vs World Champion stipulation had absolutely zero build up. The removal of Kane's mask was such a big deal, especially to fans of the Big Red Machine. Eric Bischoff even said during his promo that Kane losing his mask was Kane losing his identity, so why they didn't capitalise and build a longer story out of it is really strange. It makes it feel like this was some sort of last minute decision. Kane losing his mask really should have built up and built up and then ended with a pay per view main event, and I'm not so sure if Triple H should have been involved in the story either. This was really one for The Undertaker. The dead man was working on SmackDown at the time and he was doing the whole big evil thing, but there were ways to get around that. Kane's story was so intertwined with The Undertaker's story that, to me, it just makes more sense to have Kane's older brother take part in the removal of the mask, but that didn't happen. Money left on the table perhaps, but it is what it is. Triple H vs Kane would main event the June 23rd 2003 episode of Raw, and fans finally got to see Under the Mask at the end of the broadcast. I'll just point out here too that Kane was unmasked 5 months prior on WWE Raw because I know someone will bring it up in the comments. The January 27th Raw in 2003 featured Batista and Triple H taking on Kane and RVD and Batista removed Kane's mask on the outside, forcing Kane to run away and leave RVD all alone. Eagle-eyed fans who paused the video would have seen Kane's face exposed for just a brief moment. I know I complained a little about the lack of build up towards this mask vs belt match, but on the night itself, the whole show was pretty much centred around Kane, so the WWE got that right at least. Throughout the June 23rd episode of Raw, held in Madison Square Garden, we saw footage of Kane backstage looking at himself in a mirror and thinking about how he got up to this point. A poll was ran on WWE.com where fans predicted the outcome of the match, and 56% of fans thought Kane was gonna win tonight, take these poll results with a grain of salt though. An RVD even gave Kane some encouragement before the big match. Just before coming down to the ring, Kane smashed the mirror he'd been looking at all night. It was hard to tell what Kane was thinking here, but one thing was for sure, he looked very intense. The match itself was great, plenty of false finishes left fans on the edge of their seats, but after interference from Ric Flair, interference from Randy Orton and a few pedigrees from Triple H, Kane lost the match. Eric Bischoff comes out and he tells Kane to remove the mask, but before doing so, Evolution again attacked the Big Red Machine. This leads to RVD coming out and Evolution getting taken care of. It looks like the removal of Kane's mask may be cancelled, but after thinking it over and debating with himself, Kane decides to remove the mask. With RVD looking on and with Kane's back to the hard camera, the iconic mask comes off. Kane then snaps his head around to look at Van Damme, 
and Raw goes off the air with RVD taking a choke slam. Fans had just seen what was behind the mask and fans were also torn. Maybe it was one of those things that you want to see so bad but when you actually see it it's a bit of a letdown. Maybe fans just weren't prepared to see the devil's favourite demon remove a part of his identity, but Kane had unmasked live on Raw and fans would need to tune in next week to see what happens next. All in all though, I remember this quite well and the feedback wasn't great. Let's talk about Kane's appearance here for a brief moment. It's been said that Glenn was halfway through a haircut backstage but when Vince saw Glenn with half his hair removed, it was decided that Glenn would keep what he had and Kane's unmasking would include this messy hairstyle and not the original shaved look that was originally intended. Glenn said that he realised afterwards that he'd have to pick his children up from school with this half finished haircut so the next week it was decided that Kane should be bald. A big sticking point about this new version of Kane however was the fact that he was supposed to have a gruesome and disfigured face and well <laughs> he didn't. The makeup department just kinda smeared Glenn's face with dark makeup and I don't know personally I didn't know what to expect but the way it was built up I think I was expecting something totally different. Even more confusing was the fact that the next week on Raw when Kane decided to attack Eric Bischoff the makeup had been completely removed. All that remained was the contact lens in Kane's right eye and so this disfigured monster who had to hide behind a mask for years, well he looked pretty normal all things considered. Steve Austin wanted to motivate Kane a little further on the July 7th episode of Raw. Austin, and indeed the fans, took great delight in Kane chokeslamming Eric Bischoff the week prior and so Stone Cold was out to give Kane a little positive reinforcement. Fans thought that Kane was gonna be a babyface, but Kane incorrectly thought Steve Austin was laughing at him while Austin was just laughing at the fact that Eric Bischoff got hurt. Because Kane felt he was being made a joke of, he attacked Stone Cold and this made fans instantly boo the big red machine. Steve ends up fighting back, Kane takes a chair shot followed by a Stone Cold stunner, but just like the old days, Kane sits up, he gets to his feet and Austin takes a choke slam. One thing was for sure here, the days of Kane having fun and showing his more human side were over. Kane was being portrayed as a vicious and dangerous monster once again, so while fans maybe missed the mask, they were going to get to see Kane being absolutely unhinged once again. The following week, the infamous Jim Ross interview took place and to their credit, the WWE tried to address some of the concerns fans had towards this new version of Kane. Mainly, why didn't he have a disfigured face after fans were led to believe as much for years and years? Raw ended with this interview and look, there's a big old can of gasoline just sitting right there. The alarm bells should have been ringing. Jim Ross says that he's been a fan of the Big Red Machine and he wants to conduct this interview in order to help Kane and the fans understand what he's doing and why he's doing it. After watching footage from last week's Raw, Kane explains his actions. RVD and Steve Austin have tried to tell Kane to just be himself, but who Kane really is is someone who got burnt in a fire when he was young, someone who has had to deal with a lot of pain and a lot of suffering throughout his life. And Kane has always felt that he's someone that people wouldn't accept. Jim Ross then says that Kane has hid behind a mask and now he's hiding behind this towel, but he doesn't have a scarred or disfigured face. Ross gingerly asks Kane why is he hiding away when in reality Kane's face isn't that bad. Kane reiterates that he was burned in a fire and the flesh was burnt from his face, and Kane says that Jim Ross is just like all those other people who wanted him to see a shrink. The same people who said Kane's burns were only superficial, so it appears here that there was some psychological issues going on with the big red machine. He hid behind a mask because he feared people would laugh at him, but there was nothing really wrong with his face. Kane removes the towel and asks JR to tell him what he sees, and Jim Ross doesn't see a monster, he sees a man who needs help. Ross says he knows what it's like to be made fun of, but Kane should stop letting insensitive people ruin his life. Guys like RVD, Steve Austin, Jim Ross and even the fans of the WWE respect Kane, they support Kane and they don't care at all what Kane looks like. 
Kane says the people are liars, just like his doctors, just like Steve Austin, just like Jim Ross. Kane says as soon as he leaves the room, JR is gonna laugh at him. Kane then stands up and he tells Jim not to make fun of him. And then, back at the arena, Steve Austin comes out. Austin reiterates that everyone is just trying to help Kane. And Kane says the only way he can be helped is if people feel the same pain that he did. Kane then grabs Jim Ross, he punches him out, and then the gasoline gets poured all over JR and Jim gets set on fire. Staff run in to save Ross and back at the arena, Eric Bischoff comes out and he blames this all on Steve Austin. The following week, during another rampage, Kane completely lost the plot and he tombstoned Linda McMahon. That'll do it for this video then. The unmasking of Kane is one of those things that I feel fans didn't really take to all that well and even looking at more recent comments and posts online, it seems that a lot of fans still felt it was a bad idea. I said earlier that I'm kinda torn on it. I liked the mask and I liked how different it made the Kane character but I also get that characters need to evolve, especially characters like Kane's that are so elaborate. The mask would make a return down the road of course but that's a story for another time. But this also proves that the mask was such a big part of Kane's character that they couldn't just get rid of it and move on forever. Kane's mask was even on display when Glenn got inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. Anyway, thanks to Cameron on Patreon for requesting this video and thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and take care.